we're now going to play a song from an album called Odyssey and Oracle. And you may remember it, I don't know. It's called Time of the Season. Season. When love runs high in the sky, give it to me easy. And let me Funnily enough, when we first recorded it, I didn't really like that song at all. And uh, it, was, um, it was the last song that was uh, written for Odyssey and Oracle, our last album. And it was finished in the morning before we recorded it. We recorded it in the afternoon at Abbey Road. And so I, I didn't know the, the melody that well. So I was in the studio on my own, and Rob was in the control room. And he was saying to me, no, Colin, that's not quite right. Can you try it? And this went on and on. In the end, Rod said, listen. No, I said to him, if you know it so well, you come out here and you sing it. In fact, I remember him saying, listen, if you're so fucking good, you come out here and sing it. I said, look. You sing it, you know, come on, for God's sake, you know, this is all you've got to do. This was the tone of the conversation. When we were singing, it's the time of the season for loving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the first thing we ever recorded, yeah, really? was sometimes. Yeah, and, and sometimes we still play it. it not so much inspired, but there was, there's a little affectionate nod in the lyrics of Time of the Season, on your dad is rich and your mum is good looking. And the verse that says, what's your name, who's your daddy, is he rich like me? What's your name, who's your daddy? Is he rich like me? Has he take off in a time to show you what you need to live? First of all, I thought that that could be a hit song. We thought it was a really good album. We really did. And it was the first time that we'd had the freedom in the studio to produce ourselves and to follow the ideas that we wanted. I'm not sure that we knew it at the time, but I think it's been one of our strengths in that we don't sound like anybody else. And then when it started to become uh, a successful album in terms of people like Paul Weller talking about it, and, 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 and many, many young bands up to the present day talking about it. The last guy, the, uh, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, just a few weeks ago, was saying really nice things about it. So um, I then started listening to it again. And, and it surprised me how it did have its own sound. And, and it sounded like nothing else, I thought, around at the time. It came out a lot later in America, and, and I suppose that's where it was its biggest hit. And so they think of it as about two years later than perhaps we do. Yeah. But uh, the funny thing was that um, a couple of singles were released in England, and they weren't chart successes. And so we thought we were bowing to the inevitable, that there wasn't a place for us. And, uh, and we actually, the band folded before Odyssey and Oracle was even released. I think that we all felt that it was, it was winding down. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. I think we were moving towards an inevitable situation. Nobody, nobody said, look, I believe in this band. Let's hold it together. We, come on, guys. No one said that. I can see what he's doing. He's wrong. Except for Chris and me. <laughs> he's wrong. <laughs> Odyssey and Oracle rounded off our three years career very, very well. It was the end of a creative uh, circle. But because it was so different, I am sometimes intrigued. Supposing it hadn't been the end, supposing it had been the beginning of a new creative circle, what would we have done? I sometimes think that, but we'll never know, so there we are.